Welcome to A Buzz, brought to you by the Peters Central Book Library. I am Miss Shannon. And I'm Miss Linda, and we are here to give you all the information you need for the first half of November. Wow, I, I can't, know. it's crazy to think I that know. we're talking about turkeys, we're done with pumpkins, and we're moving on to turkeys. I know, and it goes like that. Before the month is done, we're going to be talking about elves and snowmen and gingerbread. We so. are, <laughs> and you know what, right I, along. I did bring one decoration, but I could only find one, so we're going to have to share it. Oh, I couldn't, yeah, I, mine's, I have mine, but not Yeah, where them. is it? It's in my filing cabinet under turkeys. <laughs> oh, of course it's filed <laughs> under turkeys. Oh, I should have thought to look. Because I looked in, mine was filed under crap, you know, because it's like, <laughs> it was because all of my, all of my filing, that, are you talking about that big one right. with stuff in it? I just reached in there and kind of looked and thought, oh, I have, I, I'm sure I have a turkey in yeah. here. I meant to look for mine yeah. yesterday, but I didn't. All right, let's well, see. You, you can gobble, gobble. All right. Gobble, we can gobble, gobble, turn. says the bird. Okay, gobble, gobble. Yeah. All right, gets me in a holiday spirit. Yeah, or maybe. something. Or something. Yeah. You well, look great. You look thank good. Thank you. You pull it off nicely. All thank right, you. Well, of course we, we do. Before we get started on all the wonderful things that are going on in November and the beginning of December, can you tell me a little bit of some book buzz bits? Boy, you're getting good at saying that and I saying am. that really fast. I practice it when I'm in the shower and brushing my teeth. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll bet do. you do. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I am so sure. Well, you know what? I actually wished I would, you know, I wished I would have had this, I found this article for last month. Oh. Because it is wild. And I don't know how I would feel about working at this library. Okay? I can't wait. You find the coolest things. I do. I don't know where they come from. And I, I, no contacts today. So, all right. This is in Wyoming. And I would think, oh my gosh, only in Wyoming. And there are some pictures that I'm gonna maybe show you, see if it'll, if it'll show up. Wyoming Library, built over a cemetery. Restless spirits haunt the shelves. Yeah, yeah that would've been good for Halloween. It would've no, been. Would, no. If you knew that, but though, you were hired, you, no. you wouldn't have even applied if you knew that. <laughs> Right. Remember we went on that ghost walk in Gettysburg? Yeah. Yeah. When we were at the convention? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, I don't know. It kind of interests me because it's spooky, but I don't want to be somewhere where, you spooky know, they're haunting time. the shelves. I'm okay to take a tour, but I want to leave after that. Yeah, but it has to be in the daylight with all the lights on. <laughs> okay. Wyoming has a rich history, and sometimes that history doesn't want to be forgotten. Since opening its doors in 1980, which I would have closed my doors immediately had I known this, the Sweetwater County Library in Green River has had a large number of reports of paranormal experiences. Ooh. According to... oh. Good, you're okay, good on the background. Mm -hmm. According to the American <laughs> Libraries magazine, the library was built on top of a cemetery that dates back to the 1860s. The graves were moved in the 1920s, but a coffin, ooh, I, I, you know what, I feel the same way reading this now as I did when I first read it. But a coffin turned up in 1985, attesting that not all graves had been moved. It is believed that there are still bodies underneath the library to this day. Instances of lights turning on and off on their own, doors opening and closing, names being whispered, and even typewriters and computers typing on their own have been reported. One of the most hair-raising, <laughs> hair you're awfully quiet through this. One of the most hair-raising occurrences was when a librarian briefly walked away from her computer only to return and have her name typed boldly on the screen. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is something <laughs> out of Stephen King. Oh, oh my God. No, no, Former library director Pat Patricia Lafrave. Lefra Former is the key word on that sentence. <laughs> told America. The that's a good point. That is, it really does say former, so okay. She said, I don't think the system could have done that itself. This is a woman, you know, like if she yeah. went back and it's on there. She said, it had no word processing capabilities, and at that time, we didn't have email. Her name appeared in quite large letters with nothing else on the screen. Oh, dear. <laughs> no, thanks. I would have looked at that and gone, wow, you don't have to tell me twice. Right. Boom, right out of there. 
The staff has been keeping a ghost log of all encounters and events that have happened in the library. And, um, what, you know, they, they went on to mention all these things, but the one that I put on, that I kept on here is said, the one guy, Mickey, is part of the staff. And this, this was back um, in 1993 that he had heard this. I heard my name whispered several times, but no one was asking for me. When I told the staff about it, uh, she, uh, this woman said that she had heard her name whispered many times in the last two days and no one was there. Well, no. So I don't know if, okay. And um, this is a picture of the library. From the outside. From the outside. Okay. I don't know if you can, if yeah, this is good. It. Yeah, you can take can it. can kind of see yeah, it. Sure. And, yeah, and then, yeah, there you go. Okay, stay there. And then this is like a picture of like what inside one of the creepy halls. I don't know. Does it look haunted? Uh, debatable. And then oh, the creepy halls. Oh, I don't know what this one is about. I think maybe that maybe that book just appeared out of nowhere and was just sitting on the thing. But it's hard to say because we have books that appear out of nowhere all over the floor, wow. you know, from kids. <laughs> And then something um, also had happened in their, their bathroom, nice bright orange stalls. Oh, you know what that reminds me of when you talk about it happening in the bathroom? Harry Potter yeah, with moaning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wah! And all the water comes <laughs> splashing up and everything. Okay, so that's, yeah, haunted libraries. Libraries built on a cemetery. No, thanks. Well, I mean, like... I mean, we've both been in the library, like after hours, yeah. like, for things, and it is creepy. Like it's because it's we eerily, have. yeah. Because it's you know the lights go down and it's dark, dark and, and, and it's a big building, and you feel like somebody's gonna pop out at you, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah. And that's we don't believe that it's built on a cemetery. But no, if anything in this area, it'd be a coal mine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we are the Arrowhead, so there could be some like Native Americans like buried underneath Ooh. us somewhere. All right, that's enough. Okay. If you hear any tribal music, All right. we'll know. No, we're good. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I'm going to sleep. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> nope, nope, we're Ex fine. It's Ixnay not on, on the cemetery. Okay. <laughs> that is creepy. Oh, crap. I mean, what could I just did? Oh, on your new tablecloth, too. I know. Here, you can use this scarf you have to a... wipe it up. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> when the people wonder why there's a stain on the uh, sample. No. Okay, oh, it's so, only apple juice. Um, so we have coming up, we're working with our friends from WQED, we here. have our Tales to Tunes puppet show coming up at the okay. very, very beginning of November on the 2nd. So we're going to be having um, the Pittsburgh Puppet Works or Puppet Theater is going to come and do a special puppet show with um, the, and they tell the story, they, they tell the kids stories that, wrote that are previous winners in the WQED writing contest. Right. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then coming up in January, we'll start to be promoting the writing contest a lot in our library. So it'll be a nice way to kind of get that kick started. That's going to be so fun. So we can come see some fun puppets from the second. And then following that for our teens, that's going to be at 11 o'clock on November 2nd. Then following that for the teens, we have Not Your Grandmother's Bingo. We're going to have a teen-only bingo mm -hmm. day. And you, are, you automatically will win a prize just for showing up dressed like a grandmother. So... I oh, hope, funny. I, hope, I didn't know that yeah, part. I think, or I didn't remember that part that you have them dressing up yes, as a grandma. I had to find my good grandma costume. Oh, so that's so come funny. Up, I'll figure out something. But, yes. Yeah, so I don't know, be though. My mom's a grandma. She's pretty hip. She is hip. But, you know, a stereotypical grandma. A stereotypical bingo grandma. And that's what mine was. You know, and then they got all those daubers. The daubers, yeah. And they've got like and 25 sheets all falling. over there, and they can do it. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, wait a minute, B and two. Yeah, following one sheet. <laughs> like, nope, I don't have it. You know, it takes me all day to figure out I didn't win. <laughs> Yep, pretty much it's me too. Uh, so that will be on um, November 2nd. So the Tales to Puppet Show is at 11, and then Bingo is at 2. The Tales to Puppet Show, the puppet show is for all ages and families, and the Bingo is specifically just for our teens that are in 6th through 12th grade. So, cool. Tweens. Uh, tween Maker Monday. Um, we are doing Snap Circuits, That's which fun. will be really fun. I was hoping to have um, an example of them today. We get them from Citizens mm -hmm. Library, our home space. 
on the flyer that they're putting up there is a picture of what um, a SNAP circuit looks like, and they learn about s s building circuits, and everything snaps together, and you can do all these really cool things Make with it. Make lights light up and stuff. Exactly. So we are going to be playing with those. Cool. Yeah. Well, you had a great turnout for the donuts and dominoes, so hopefully those friends will be coming back oh, for uh, SNAP yeah. circuits. Yeah, let me see. Donuts and dominoes. Snap circuits and what? I have to feed them. Because we always say if you feed them, they will come. Snap circuits and snacks. Yeah. And you have an open ended. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you find. That Whatever day. I can find. All right. We will have a snack. But um, once again, another Tween Maker Monday. Monday uh, the 4th, uh, November 4th at 4 o'clock. It's one of those. Walk on over after school, yeah. have a snack, and have some fun with your friends. And I was so glad. I, yeah, I missed the out of town for the domino one. I'm so glad to hear one. It was well. a lot of fun. And go and speaking with the walking over after school. So just for parents, because this there was a mom that whose child walked over after school, and then she was like mm -hmm. kind of peeking in because she was nervous they didn't make it. Tell your kids that when they get to the library, you know if they don't have their own phone yet, um, just to let one of us know, and they're mm -hmm. welcome to use the library phone to call home so that way they can get the a check quick in. check in with you, so that way you know they made it over from school. So absolutely, um, you know, so if our fourth, fifth graders so that want to come on over, they're welcome to do yep. so. We do have kids that do that, and so love it. I let you wipe this up because this was my gift to you. So now you know. Um, no. This, this damp stain. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't, it was apple juice, it didn't stain. It just I had, I had, it. but okay. anyways, so um, on the, on November 7th at yes. 7 o'clock, we're going to be doing Mom and Me t-shirt scarf. So this scarf, I'll put it on, I don't care if it's what, was made out of a Pretty old t-shirt. So you can do you, like the little fringes, you see. can do... A, a, like an infinity scarf with them. There's all kinds of different ways yeah. you can do it. And it's this didn't have any print on it or anything? No, we cut the print part off. You can do one with prints though and then it gives you kind of like a different color. Yeah. Because when you kind of tie it together, you can also layer it, you know, and do like a little bit tighter like that. But see, but I was going to ask on how you do it. It does it, match but then your I, outfit. I decided I won't ask how you do it because we've got to get the kids to get there and learn how to there do you it. Go. So there you go. That's for you. There. Thank you. So I made that for Miss Linda. Thank I didn't you. Know it was going to be blue. No, so I, that and was I nice. didn't know. Yeah. Thank so you. So that's one, and we encourage, um, you know, teens and tweens come. Bring your mom. You guys can make them together. There's no sewing involved. There's just cutting involved. So it's pretty easy to do. And do these curl up by themselves, kind of? Yeah. Or? They wow. do. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, I love how you do your, what, reuse or reduce, reuse, recycle mm -hmm. kind of things. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, we made pumpkins out of books this past week, and I had six kids come, all boys. Really? Yeah. Neat. They had a lot of fun. Neat. So that was good. How, so it did. I, that, I wish I would have been around to watch, because I've yet to watch how to do that. How to make a pumpkin. Yeah, how to, like, cut the pages mm -hmm. or whatever it is you do. Yep, it's just a lot. It's a lot of cutting. Yeah. So the boys were getting very like they were over it. So their pumpkins were not quite pumpkin shaped, but they enjoyed it. So that's it was all right. Good. It was yeah. good. Gets the point across. Yes. Okay. STEM. A titanium uh, titans will be back in November. Uh, as um, I can tell you from the first one that they did, they're um, a group of high school kids that are really, really into this techie stuff all the STEM working with things that I hadn't heard of. As a matter of fact, I ha always have to bring the flyer just to say what it is because I'm not even sure they have it up there. It's like, okay, Lego, let me make glasses. Lego, we do fun. Lego EV3 sumo bots. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, oh, Arduino programming. I've heard of them, but I don't, you know, I would just love to you know see them in action anyway when they did the first one in october those kids were having so much fun mm -hmm. it was such a great turnout um the kids that come in and mentor them the the attendees they they are so into it yeah you know that's just their thing that's awesome it is so we have more coming up up, up in november um the ones we have a, a titanium titans k through three on November 9th in the morning, 9.30 to 11.30, um, 7th and 8th grade on uh, Thursday, November 14th and 21st, that's a two-parter, 3.15, that's another walk over from the middle school, 
and, um, and come and enjoy. All the information was posted on the screen and you get onto their website mm -hmm. and register. So it's done through them. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Sit me again. Yes, book All clubs. Right. Book clubs. Hungry tween. Talk about a hungry tween. How about a hungry librarian? I'm kind of hungry <laughs> myself. And I didn't bring anything. Okay. So last time I talked about we're doing a three-parter. Yeah, this is exciting. Yeah. This, book club. this is the first time I've tried this. A three-parter tween book club mm -hmm. that's going to include with it journaling. So you have some writing and some reading. So I like it. Everybody that uh, registers to participate gets a uh, book, and it is a journal. It's called Who Is Blank? The Story of My Life, a Journal for You by You. So this is based on the books, the Who Is, Who Was, and I always say Who Wants to Be, you know. <laughs> um, where is. Exactly, yeah. Where is, what is. Mm -hmm. You know, they're starting to do like famous places and locations. Um, uh, for October, I read Who is Alfred Hitchcock, and um, for November, my my who was is Mother Teresa, <laughs> and the reason being, I, there was a thought process to this, is I was thinking about November and being thankful and kind and all of that, and well, can't get much, you know, more yeah. thankful, kind, and wonderful than Mother Teresa, so yeah. I'm going to you know, read about yeah, her. there you go. So what that means is when, when they come to the club, they would have already read whichever one they want mm -hmm. and come and tell us about it. Talk about it. We'll yeah. talk about it. Then we'll spend some time journaling about ourselves. That's and awesome. I'm going to do it too. I'll journal and have fun with them. Cool. Yep. I love it. Oh, what and that cool is, um, when is that? Oh, da, da. Monday uh, the 11th, November 11th. Again, walk walk from McMurray, walk on over at 4 o'clock. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, here we go. More All QED. All right. So for every, every um, month we do our Adobe QED, and it's different themes. So in October, we did pink, a little Pinklicious mm -hmm. Halloween party. We made pink pumpkins. It was super cute. So for November, we're going to do um, Splash and Bubbles, which Splash and Bubbles has actually become one of my favorite shows to do programs with because it's all about sea creatures. Oh, fun. So it takes place under the sea. It's done by Jim Henson Company, so it's, you know, it's obviously you know, high quality of a show. And um, so we're going to learn about some, some fish and go under the sea with Splash and his mm -hmm. friend Bubbles. So that will be on the uh, 14th at mm. 6.30. And then coming up that weekend is, this is one of my favorite events, Which uh, one? the mini golf. Oh. Is our an second our annual? Second annual mini golf yeah. in the library. So now that it's cold out, you can't really hit up the local mini golf courses. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you're not maybe heading to Myrtle Beach anytime soon. So you can come to the library. I and wanted to. I, well, All yes. Right. Um, come to the library and you can mini golf inside mm -hmm. the library. The whole first floor is set up with a nine hole mini golf course, all done by our staff and apparently township employees. Um, Paul Lauer is designing a hole. Good. He requested electricity for it. So I don't uh, even know what all that's going to entail. Oh, yeah. well, you know how you have those automatic ball really oh, oh I, don't know. I bet he could i don't know i know and i know for sure we're gonna have a star wars themed hole done by another staff member so nice um our staff designs them and it's like a little mini competition within our staff too for the to design them and then we mm -hmm. um we play mini golf throughout the entire library so it, it runs from 10 till 2 that saturday so you do have to register ahead of time for a tea time. Okay. So they, our tea times are set up every half hour. So you can sign, you and your group of four or six or whatever can um, sign up for your tea time. Parents are encouraged to play too. This is not just for kids. Okay. Uh, or last year we had a group of adults that played. Everybody is welcome to play. Right. Everybody likes mini golf, right? Exactly. All ages. It's not an age specific event. So everyone is welcome. Sign up your group. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're looking for some fun thing to do with your friends over the weekend, yeah. um, you know, sign up for, for your tea time and you can come on in and, and do that. So you can call us to sign up. You can visit the library to sign up. Um, again, so it's be on Saturday the 16th from 10 till 2. Do sign up for your tea time as soon as possible because it, it possibly, your time slot can fill up, so. Oh, it's gonna be a blast. I mm -hmm. wanna make a hold this year because last you year should. I was gone. Yeah, you were. Like I was totally out of you town. You better, better sign up. Sign up for your hole. Wait till Tim hears that he's going to help me make a golf hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
that's what you do to husbands. Surprise! <laughs> you have to help me because mine has to be the best. <laughs> yeah, so our reigning champion is um, our assistant director, Sue Miller, for her Lego hole. Because as the uh, after the um, public plays, they vote on their favorite hole. Okay. Oh, so I can't our, take. I can't our take champion. the. I can't take the pressure. But last year, I mean, Sydney and I made most of. I them. wish I would have. Yeah, I wasn't even around last year, so I'll have to look at pictures because I haven't even really seen what the holes look like to have a clue of why I just volunteered myself and my <laughs> husband. <laughs> Well, they're not really that complex. It is inside of a library, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Will you have 18 holes or nine? Nine. nine. Yeah. Okay. But throughout the whole say, first floor, holes. Wow. so we have like um, a couple like in the children's department. We had um, one back in the teen room. We had a couple in the multiverse room. We had one like in the adult section where like the new books are. We try to make them in a way that people can still kind of access their materials. We had two in one or two in the lobby we had one near our adult dvds mm -hmm. so it's all the whole first floor and then we do depending on our attendance which we had a high attendance last year so we did it this way last year we'll do like a shotgun start so we'll everybody will start at a different hole and then you kind of work your way around right. perfect yeah it's cool yeah. cool yeah it's a lot of fun how many holes do you have being made now three for sure the committed committed okay. Better sign up. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Show me some pictures first. All right. Okay. So that's going. So do you have some books to share, Miss Linda? I do. Two more minutes for some books. I do. Um, I brought one in particular that I wanted to talk about because Beth Rabel, this is her newest one, The Humiliations of Pippi, or Pippi, Pippi, sorry, Pippi, <laughs> Mickey. Beth Rabel. It's her new one. Yeah. And she's coming to Peters Township. Yeah, that's so exciting. And I'm excited because I had my book group last year read um, her um, Pack of Dorks book, and I got in contact with her, remember? And yeah. I talked to um, Mrs. Owens, the librarian, and said, What do you think about, you know, if I was able to um, get her, if, if she would want to do it? And I talked to this woman, and she's like, I would love to do it. What, why it didn't happen last year is because um, Beth was overcommitted, like she couldn't yeah. do it. So then Mrs. Owens and I talked about a time for this mm -hmm. fall. And as it all worked out and, and they got a wonderful from Peters Township grant uh, foundation or something, mm -hmm. a grant to be able to host her. And um, it's Thursday, November 5th, I believe. Anyway, she'll be in town, so I thought, Let's bring one of her, her books. I mean, even if you're not part of it, you know, you can certainly enjoy her writing. First eight years of Penelope Pippi, McGee's education have been a curriculum in humiliation. From her kindergarten self-portrait as a busy, or a piece of, oh, a piece of busty bacon. <laughs> I see it on the back okay. cover. That's, that's exactly how I would describe it. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, to fourth grade, ooh, when, when she peed her pants on a field trip. Okay, thanks to a uh, vile Kara Sampson to seventh grade where, well, she doesn't even talk about seventh grade ever. Eighth grader uh, Pippi, fearing that her humiliations will follow her into the halls of Northbrook High School next year, decides to use her last year in middle school to clear the slate and to save other innocents from the same um, picked upon, laughed at fate. Uh, Pippi McGee is seeking redemption, but she'll take revenge too. Ooh. So yeah, that is funny. <laughs> That's what a busty yeah, piece of bacon little, looks like. Yeah. When I grew up, I want to be a piece of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody yeah, loves I'm bacon. I'm hoping to be able to yeah, get over there and see her when Look she her comes. Face. Yeah, I'm hoping so. I mean, well, I'm supposed to help Mrs. Owens, so um, I know we will. We will. We'll. Ooh, there's a whole list of things that bad happened to her. Okay, so that's my Beth Frabel story. Cool, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I decided to bring books about, um, well, I'll do this real quick. So um, for those of you who do not know, this year is the 80th. Yes, 80th anniversary of Batman. So I decided to bring, you know, just to, to fill up so people remember, we have a really awesome graphic novel collection, both in our children's section and in our young adult section. 
So both our teens and our adults and our kids, everybody seems to really be liking these graphic novels more and more. So I wanna just give a little push out that we have them. So come in and get them. And we have beautiful new shelving, so they're really nicely displayed. Oh, I so love you can't miss that. them. Uh -huh. And it's right out on the outside of the teen room. So um, you know our parents that may be our graphic novel fans, um, you can browse those while your kids are playing in mm -hmm. the area. So don't forget Batman, and he is 80 years old. So, um, you know, kudos Looks to good. Batman. Looks good for 80. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, yep. you need, need to know his secret. <laughs> you do. All right, do you have another one? Sure. Um, yeah, I brought a couple. These are cute romances that have to do with sports. Okay. So, um, real quick, I'll just kind of mention a little bit about them. So we have taking a play and stealing home. So for our teen sports fans or um, romance mm -hmm. fans, these are some cute brand new ones hot off the presses. This one um, is by Abby Gines and she, Glines, and she writes a mm -hmm. bunch of sports theme books, um, usually about football. So um, real cute stories. Um, you know, oh, the Aurora, he didn't seem to care about my being death. If he was a player, then why would he go out of his way to get to know me? Riker, oh, she's staring with those big green eyes. Mm. I just haven't cared about anything since getting to know her more. So cute mm. little Aww. teen romance, we football, like Friday Night Lights, and I think Stealing Home looks like really cute too. A, little bit, a wonderful baseball story. I found myself swept away in all those warm summer nights of hanging out with friends and hoping for first love. So cute. Mm. Cute stories because people a lot of times we get kids that say they want books about sports so those are some sports oh, yeah. romances which is a little bit different yeah I like that mm -hmm. yeah even athletes can be romantic there we go um, the next book I brought uh, because I've been talking a lot about kindness lately and I thought great for November mm -hmm. for the kindness the same reason why I was gonna read about uh, Mother Teresa and um, what a great thankful month. So I thought I would bring this and um, with the time that we have left that we could read it okay. as we go out sure. as a little Thanksgiving thing. Perfect. It's called A World of Kindness and it's from the editors and illustrators of Pajama Press. So um, let me show you the cover of it. I like all the clay hands on the I front. do too. I, the cover is great. Mm -hmm. And we are going to, all right. Just take it from there. We will go ahead and dig in and read it. Okay. This was a, a donation from, uh, uh, what was it, the Plaus family? Plaus family, memory yep. of Cindy Shaw Buckley. And okay. Oh, should we show the pictures too sure. while we're reading it? Go ahead, you want to start? Are you kind? Do you wait your turn? <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness. You're welcome. <laughs> Will you help someone younger? That's cute. Aw. Or older. Aw. Are you gentle with animals big? And small? Aw. Oh, kitties. Do you say please and thank you? It's easy, you know. Aw. But. <laughs> 